the Miami Hurricanes, all right, when when it comes down to it, it just seems like, hey, the recruiting is always there. In the three recruiting classes that have been under Mario Cristobal's tenure, under under his you know stewardship there, 13th, 8th, now 5th. So the talent, the talent acquisition is there, Dave. They're, they're able to bring guys in. They brought in Cam Ward out of the, the transfer portal, one of the most – High profile signings is what I'm gonna call it in this in this free agency as pool. Um as a as a guy, you know, formerly in player personnel and things like that, just tell people kind of what Miami is getting in Cam Ward and what that should do for the expectations of the Hurricanes this year. No, I mean I think that's massive. I think it's massive for them. That changes the game from that standpoint. I mean, I know Tyler Van Dyke went to Wisconsin, but getting a guy like Cam Ward. With a very manageable schedule, I know we're going to talk about it here in a minute. Not getting ahead of myself here, but and you, and you got your weapons, Xavier Restrepo and Jacoby George coming back. I, uh, you got in the college level. I think you have to have some guys that when it breaks down for a guy like Shannon Dawson, the OC for Miami, you have to have some guys that can go make some plays and improvise. And we saw that at Washington State next year, last year. And we're in this. We're in the time of college football now. I think you're. Quarterback can no longer just be uh, – I hate using this term, but I'm going to use it because every quarterback's a game manager to some extent. But I think your quarterback now has to be one of your top three or four players on your roster. You just can't kind of manage – be a winnable guy. I think he's got to be that winnable rare guy when you're grading these rosters now. And I think Cam Ward takes this Miami roster to another level. And it's – they've been recruiting well. Again, similar to – we're talking about Joey McGuire. All these teams have something in common. Big years kind of going to these third years – Mario has been – Coach Chris Ball been recruiting very well. Can it translate onto the field? Can we stop seeing the lack of discipline stuff that I think really frustrates Miami fans um, and kind of let the talent go speak for itself? Because I think there's a lot of winnable games on that schedule. And in my opinion, as we stand right now, February 12th, they're a top – I think they may be – if you put my feet to the fire right now, I may take the Canes to be my ACC favorite right now in February. Man, yeah, that that would be that would definitely be a big turnaround, Brendan. Welcome in, Brendan. Uh, what do you think, uh, Andy Stowe, on here in the comments? Asked an early lean. Would you take Miami or would you take Florida? They're going to be playing uh, our first game of the season, I believe. So, uh, who would you, who would you take? Would you take the Canes or would you take the Gators early on? Yeah, sorry for some technical difficulties, but I would. I'm leaning Miami right now, and just the way Florida's trending, and Miami, just the recruiting they've been, uh, kind of the recruiting hot streak they've been going on the past couple of years with Mario Cristobal. I like the I like my I like Miami's talent better than Florida. I think they're just a better team, period, than Florida right now. And look, when you add Cam Ward, I mean, they got the better quarterback in the game. Uh, where's that game being played at? It's in Gainesville. Uh, let's look at the schedule right Gainesville. now. This is okay. at yeah at the Swamp, so that does give a yeah. little bit of advantage there. It, it does. So it swamps not an easy place to play. I still lean Miami slightly. It does worry me that Mario is not great in uh, in close games. I'm sure you guys might might have touched on that uh, before. No, not yet. We haven't got to it yet. yet. We we're just about to. Yeah, that's definitely a big topic. But I still lean Miami. Yeah, and listen, I will say this: I was one that that I said, hey, I wouldn't blame the Miami administration if they just went out on the field and fired Mario Cristobal after that Georgia Tech game last year because that was just a dereliction of, of duty. I mean, it was atrocious in how they mishandled the end of that game. All you have to do is take a knee. You take a knee and the game is over. Totally, totally botched the end of that. There was no reason to run a play. He could absolutely take a knee and they, they end up fumbling the football and losing that game. And the frustrating thing about that is, is they would go out and lose games like that, and then they'd go beat a Clemson team, you know, or they, they, they'd beat a, a ta even though Texas a and wasn't great record wise. Texas a and was a talented football team, and they'd go out and beat them. Different things like that. So you saw the the pieces were there, but but some of the close games that they did lose, especially ones on the road, just not being able to come out of it, David. I mean, when it comes down to it, you've added these big pieces, you know, out of the portal, like on offense, like Kim Ward. You, you had a, a depth piece at running back in Rodney Hill. And then out of the high school ranks, you already had some talented edge rushers if you're Miami and some talented guys on the defensive line. Well, then you go out and add guys like Justin Scott, a five-star. You add a five-star and Marquise Lightfoot out there, Armando Blount. I mean, all of these guys who are viewed as blue-chip prospects – 
Miami, it's never been about the talent. It's been about where is that execution and then also where is the where is the swagger? Where is the belief that you are the you? Miami used to win games getting off the bus, Dave, just because teams were intimidated by it. No, I agree. I think you hit on it just a minute ago a little bit, Blaine. It, it always felt like it was like one step forward, two step backs, even when you had like Al Golden there. I, I worked at Miami that year with him. It was – we went and beat Florida in a big win over Will Muschamp and them, and then you come back and you lose to Virginia Tech back, Virginia Tech and Duke back-to-back weeks. It's, it's, it's stuff like that. You talked about it. I mean, they beat A&M, uh, and then they go lose – to Georgia Tech when they're undefeated in a game they had no business losing. And then the next week they back it up with a loss. I know North Carolina was solid, but they back it up with a double-digit loss to to North Carolina. Then they win two good games against Clemson and Virginia, then lose three straight to NC State. Florida State's nothing to shot at. But then Louisville. I mean, it, it's just kind of – it's stuff like that. And they lose their bowl game to Rutgers in the uh, Bad Boy Motors pinstripe bowl. But it's, it's like, it, I think if I was a Miami fan, I'd want to see some consistency because I think it start like you said, talent hadn't really been the issue. And I think now with the ACC and the way Mario's recruited, I think anyone who follows college football knows Mario Cristobal's biggest strength is his ability to recruit. Wherever he's been, is an assistant coach, head coach at Oregon, now back at his alma mater at Miami. His ability to obtain the best of the best, especially in the Southeast, South Florida region where he's at now, it's been his biggest streak, not really his game day or organization throughout the building on a day-to-day basis. But I think people are like, look, the ACC is a little down. Florida State lost a lot. We had a lot more production than back. We're really probably facing Louisville. But, hey, let's don't go beat Louisville and then go drop a game at Virginia the next week. I think that's where we're a little bit at with Miami as a program overall. Yeah, for sure. I think it's a deal where, you know, I say it all the time. The true measure of greatness is consistency. Before you have consistency, you're not going to have anything else. So you, you've got to be able to uh, just understand when when certain situations are going on. It's like the, with the Chiefs and the 49ers in the Super Bowl. The players were talking about one team had been talking about the overtime rules for two weeks. One team didn't know them. I feel like sometimes the the Miami Hurricanes fall more towards that 49ers deal of things they don't know what's coming they, they aren't educated enough uh, to, to be able to respond in a confident manner to a situation and a lot of that falls on coaching um, real quick question for you here Brendan from uh, Andy Stowe which team has a better head coach right now would you say Miami or Florida I think that's a great question I mean we touched on crystal balls kind of in-game kind of coaching decisions but man, Billy Napier's record at Florida is not great at all. So I would I would still lean towards Crystal Ball. I know he's not great in crunch time, not good at uh, kind of making decisions on the fly there. Even common better sense recruiter. decisions like at Georgia Tech, but better recruiter than Napier. I, I did like what Napier did at Louisiana, but Crystal Ball has won games at whether it be at Oregon or now at my, or he didn't. He's done an all right job at Miami. Maybe a little bit slower start than most of us expected, but he still had an over 500 record in most of his seasons that he's coached. Napier, I don't know if we can say the same, especially at Florida. So I still lean Chris Ball as the better coach. Yeah, I would say so. And, and listen, the thing about it was is that it was a vacuum in the state of Florida there for a while. Like nobody was really good. And then finally Florida State stepped up and took took control of things last year. We'll see if Miami can get back in it. But I do think there's pressure. You can't go 12 and 13 in your first two years at Miami and just think that's acceptable. I just I just don't think that, that especially with some of the debacles you had in close losses that you didn't really – the other team didn't beat you. You lost the game. You you gave it away in certain cases. Let's look at the schedule here. In terms of determining, you know, how much pressure there is, you got to kind of look at some of where these games are, who you're playing. We know Florida at Florida, regardless of if they're up or down, is always – it's a rivalry. It's always a, a, a tough, tough environment to go play in. But then I think you have a stretch of, you know, five games there – that if you are who you hope to be as Miami, you win those games. You go out and win those games. I mean, Dave, am I wrong uh, in terms of games two through six there? No, yeah, I think Cal, like you mentioned a little bit, Cal's better on defense. That could be it. But still, if, like you said, if Miami's where they think they should be heading into year four with Mario, uh, or what is it? Yeah, year, year three, year yeah, three. Year three, year three with Mario, they should win that game at Cal. But again, that, that could be a little bit of a challenge. But you're right. They're two games, they're season. 
is going to come down to that October 19th matchup in the very next week, October 26th, against the in-state rival at Florida State. And I think these Miami fans, as they should, I think it's, hey, Florida State had their season last year. They went undefeated, arguably could have made the playoffs, won the ACC. But, hey, guys, they lost a lot. And we have a lot back. We have probably the second most production returning in the ACC next year. I think outside of Virginia Tech, I think Miami has it. It's our time. Like, especially we get them at home. They shouldn't be coming to the 305 or, as they used to say, the OB, the Orange Bowl, and beating us. There, I think it's just kind of my – the schedule is not very difficult to me outside of those two first two games. And, obviously, Florida. I think Billy, I think Napier and them will come out hot like they did. They always kind of start off a little strong. I know they lost to Utah last year, but the year before, they came out in his first game and beat a solid Utah team at home. So, I expect – both those teams, that'll be one of the better matchups of that opening weekend. But I think season really does come down to those uh, those games at Louisville and, and Florida State. And then, like I mentioned earlier, how do you – say you go 2-0, and 1-1 oh, and one in those two games. How do you handle that matchup against Duke and at Georgia Tech the next two weeks? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there's there's several games that – and you did a great job of pointing them out in the SEC in a video that we have on the archives. But Miami has some, some trap games here that I think they're going to be the more talented team. And especially Brennan, and I talked about some of that that recruiting class. I think some of those young guys, where where, where you see some of the great teams is, you know, think of Georgia in the in twenty one and twenty two, and think of you know some of those those Alabama teams, teams that have been went on and won national titles. It's been because they've been able to bring pressure and also bring just energy up front along their front seven in waves like two three deep uh, coming in there i think that's what justin scott who's going to be a mid-year not a mid-year uh january but he's not going to get there till fall camp so it may take him a little while but by the end of the year five-star guy him uh lightfoot blount those guys could all be contributors i think by the by the end of things and really add to that depth and give them some give them some added added energy there towards the end of the season Yep. Yeah, and they added three transfers along the defensive line as well. Uh, they got C.J. Clark from NC State. They got a decent G5 guy, uh, Marley Cook from Middle Tennessee, and uh, uh, Elijah Alston's from Marshall. So they, so they got depth, I think, at the defensive line position. And if you want to pull up that schedule once more, Blaine, if you don't mind, uh, I think that this depth, this might be you – know, when I say this, it might you might question it a little bit. But look at the game at Cal at Georgia Tech, those two games. Cal, that's their sixth straight game. No bye week before that. It's so they play six games in a row. Cal's that last game. That's a far road trip. That's yeah. coast to coast. I think we'll learn a lot about the depth of this Miami team in that game and the Georgia Tech game. It's not a far road trip to Atlanta, but they're coming off games against Louisville, against Florida State, against Duke, or excuse me, Duke. So, and those are three of the teams we would imagine would be near the top of the ACC. Uh, so, I think their depth along the offense line, along the defense line, I think will really know a lot about this team at Cal, at Georgia Tech. Two games that they should win, but we'll see. Yeah, and, and two other th things that are interesting about those. How about the fact that Cal is a dang conference game now? Okay, that's a, yeah. <laughs> that's a conference game. And then uh, Georgia Tech, guys, we saw with Georgia Tech towards the end of the year, they're one of the more physical teams when it comes to the run game and what Buster Faulkner does. So that's going to be interesting there. So no gimmies for sure. They bring back on the offensive side. We've talked about the the receivers and and, and Cam Ward, of course, how big that's going to be. But they bring back two headed monster and Mark Fletcher and Henry Parrish, who who you know combined for over a thousand yards last year. They got Rodney Hill coming in from Florida State. That's going to add uh, add a depth piece there for them. And then they they were able to bring in bring back a lot on the offensive line. They bring in Zach Carpenter over from Indiana to be the the center. So kind of fortify things in the middle there. That's why I think. Hey, expectations should be higher for Miami. Haven't seen the schedule and what all the factors we talked about. What do you guys think would be success and kind of keep the pressure off of Cristobal um, after this twenty twenty four season? What what do you? How many games do you think they need to win in for in order for that to happen? I never really want to say someone has to win double digits. I think nine. They got to get nine. I think they should get to double digits, but I'm going to factor in like. Brennan was saying maybe that trip at Cal, maybe that trip to Georgia Tech after two – I mean, it's not right after two of those Louisville and Florida State games, yet Duke sandwiched in between, but something like that. Something like that. I don't know. Maybe they go into that last game of the regular season up at Syracuse and uh, Fran Brown has his team more comfortable late in the year up and up. Like that Syracuse team. Comfortable. Yeah. So, I mean, I would say nine, to be fair to them. I mean, it's tough to 
make that big of a jump. But again, if there was a year to do it in the ACC, I think they got, like I said, I think they got the second most production level back. They get Virginia Tech at home. I don't think double digits is outside the realm, but I'll go with nine. Brennan, is it more, uh, is it more maybe about what games they win? And instead of the the number of like which ones they win, you know, got to get a couple of those key ones. Yeah, sure. I mean, they always want to beat Florida State. That's their big rival. And then that Florida game's huge as well. Uh, but I do think Mario does buy himself a little bit more breathing room because he's recruiting so well. I mean, if he goes seven and six again, they're not gonna they're not gonna get rid of him just becoming I because he's in the top five of recruiting this year. But I do think he needs to show s- some progress on the field. So I'll, I'll say eight wins, uh, but really nine wins would really make me feel confident with Mario going forward. So I think nine wins really should be the goal this season for Miami. Yeah, I mean, with Cam Ward at quarterback, there's a lot to expect there.